Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. You ever wondered why there's a source monitor and a program monitor? And why is there two? And what do you use them for? Well, that's what this tutorial is about. This is the source monitor versus the program monitor. It's very common for a non-linear editing program like Premiere Pro, like Final Cut, like Avid to have two monitors. And they're actually based off of television programs and source monitors where you'd have the program, which is the show you're watching, and the source is the camera that you're previewing before you switch to it. And there's no difference with Premiere Pro. But you can do more than just look at one clip or one camera, you can actually look at a full timeline. So let's explore that. Now, before I do, I have a whole tutorial on turning off the source monitor in something I call Make Premiere Pro Simple. So you don't have to use the source monitor, especially if you're a mouse-driven editor. But let's go look at some of the things that we can do. All right, so on the right-hand side is the program monitor. On the left-hand side is the source monitor that says no clips, so nothing has been loaded in. On the program side, it'll show you where the playhead is in the timeline. So while I'm scrubbing along, I'm looking in the program monitor. This is a, a view of my finished program. If I add titles, if I add compositing and multiple layers and blends and effects, you'll see the results in the program monitor. Pretty simple. Now let's go over to a blank sequence and I'll double click here on this clip. When I double click on a clip, it loads into the source monitor. I can see right here that this is video and no audio. If I look at this clip, there's both. If I double click on it, I can see that there's audio. Although there's none in here, there is an audio track. Okay, let's go back to the clip I'm working with. So just like the program monitor, if I scrub along here, I can scrub through this footage and see this footage. And this is the number one use for the source monitor, is previewing the clip before you insert it. And if you're a mouse driven editor and you're pretty new to editing, you probably drag from the project bin right into the timeline and then you trim. There's no right or wrong, both of these work. It's just some people, especially people coming from Avid, there's no other way. You don't drag and drop on the mouse. You have to set an in and out point. Now, if you don't set an in and out point and you drag a clip in, you get the white triangles on both sides and Yes, I do have a whole tutorial on the white triangles, but this is telling you that you've got the full clip showing. That's one way. But again, what people will do is they'll use this to mark in and out points. So let's say right at the top with her hand at the top and her spinning around, I set an in point and you can hit the I key or you could mark it here. Now I've got an in point and if I have an out point, let's say again, where she's raising her leg and flipping around that way, boom. So now I've got a clip in the source monitor with an in and out point, and I can insert this into the timeline. Click, boom, and it inserts. That's just a lot easier than taking it from the, the project bin, dropping it in, and then trimming it. Like I said, there are no hard and fast rules, but that's a perfect use of this. Now, another good use of this is I can see this clip on the right-hand side playing from the, the uh, timeline. If I load in another clip, and let's say I wanna time this up. So I wanna time his dance and her dance, and I'm using this to preview the positions of each one of the dancers. So she now moves forward here, and let's find a place where he's moving forward there. Maybe something more gestured. Okay, there. See now his body moves in like that. Okay, so now let's hit, whoops, an in point on that. I didn't want an out point. So now this is going to be the in point here. And if I insert that, I'm gonna overwrite it because I'll get rid of the tail of that little piece. Now let's zoom into that and play that back. So as she moves forward, he moves forward. Oh, maybe it's a little bit. That's probably it. I'm gonna hit the Q key and I'll extend this. 
So now let's do that. It's going up. Going up. And boom, we're into that clip. So having the source monitor allowed, allowed me to pick that point to put it in. I could trim this now with the trim monitor in the timeline, but that's a whole different uh, tutorial, which I have. Uh, but that's primarily the, the major use. Also just to preview things. You can double click on graphics and they will load in the source monitor just to check things out. You also have a view in here, so I could be zooming into this and checking out the, the clip a little bit closer. Maybe there's something I want to see in this clip and you could use the source monitor for that. You can also take a sequence. So here's my sequence full of clips. When I open that up, it opens up over here in the timeline. But if you drag that sequence into the source monitor, I'm actually now viewing a whole sequence in the source monitor. And if I wanted to, I could set in and out points for this too. So I, there's an in, an in, and an out point. No different than this sequence here. It really doesn't make sense with our dancer, but I could insert that or overwrite that into the timeline. So now I've got this clip. Now I've got a sequence nested inside. By the way, if you don't want that nested as a sequence, if you want the clips, turn this off. Now when you insert it, you'll get all the clips. So that's a little look at what the difference is between the program and the source monitor. Um, I'd have to say I, I am mostly a drag and drop editor. Unless I'm looking for high precision, uh, three or four point editing, anytime that you're setting an in and out point inside the source monitor, then I'll, I'll jump over there and do that. But again, there's no hard and fast rules. Some people coming from Avid, they live in that and they don't even uh, you know, attempt to drag and drop uh, with a mouse. A lot of us that love the mouse will do it that way. All right. So this one is for my buddy John Holden, who asked for to, to explain this to everybody else. I think he knew uh, the reason, but um, really he said that you know this would be a good tutorial. So thanks, John, for this one. All right. By the way, all of the clips in this tutorial were provided by Adobe Stock, the premier supplier of stock images, video, motion graphics, templates, illustrations, and 3D objects. Find the perfect asset for your next creative project. Okay. If you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, then take a moment and subscribe. If you want to support us some more, you can do that through PayPal. We always love our PayPal supporters. Thanks to everyone who's currently supporting us. There's a link in the description of this video and on the front of the channel. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to let you know all the different possibilities you have when working in Adobe applications.